Good, oh, good morning and welcome to Brewing Happiness. I am running a little bit late this morning. I did something I normally don't do, slept in and waited to the last minute to do everything. And here I am arriving late. That's all right. Today is a great day because today we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, the vagal nerve or the vagus nerve. I've heard of re relied to on both. So let's back up a bit. Hi, I'm Tina Ann. This is Brewing Happiness. If you're here on the replay, I'd love to know that you stop by. Leave me a note. Leave me a quick hello. So today on this show, we talk about the alchemy of happiness, right? Brewing happiness. I wanted to talk about something that is one of the big impactors to how you feel and something you can easily do something about. So it's called the vagal nerve, or sometimes it's called the vagus nerve. And this is a nerve that comes down the back of your head. It's connected to your brain. It sits very strongly here in your throat, right? And then it sends tendrils or, or pieces down into every single one of your major organ systems, your digestive system, your, you know, your uh, endocrine system, your, uh, your, your circulation system, your breathing system. The vagal nerve is connected to everything and is one of the primary um, uh, ways information goes from what's going on in the nether reaches of the body and the inner workings of the machine to the brain, right? So that's my very unscientific description of the vagus nerve. Like I said, I heard it called both vagus and vagal. But the most important thing for me, and I'm no scientist, let's face facts, I am... Uh, uh, no expert on this, but the most important thing as far as I've read about the vagal nerve is that it controls or it is, or it has a vibration, right? It has a measurable vibration. There are tools that you can use to measure at what rate your vagal nerve is vibrating. And like everything that has to do with vibrations, higher is better, right? Uh, I just got done reading a fabulous quote or a little paragraph from Albert Einstein about matter and how there is no matter and that everything is just vibrating and that some things just vibrating so slowly that we can actually see them and feel them. Um, other things vibrating so quickly that they can't be perceived by our eyes or our touch and that that is the nature of the universe of everything is vibrations. And um, I have, and in my personal experience, I, 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 I'll just talk about me for one more second, one more minute, and then, and then we'll go on. In my personal experience, a very dear friend of mine, Ar, Arjan, uh, Arjan Dejun, who is a sound healer. Now, she has been my friend since before she was given the name Arjan, her spiritual name. Um, so we've been friends for almost 25 years. And her story, I'm not going to tell it because she's going to be a guest on my show one of these days and I'm going to let her tell her story, but her story led her to sound healing. And since she's my friend, I, of course, have experienced a lot of the benefits along with her because she is now a practiced and amazing sound healer. And she uses different mediums. She uses Tibetan bowls and crystal bowls and, and gongs. And uh, I can't tell you the difference it's made in my life to have a regular interaction with a uh, blissful sound, with sound healing, with, with sounds that were designed to help align each of your soul, each of your cells. And um, in fact, I was so impressed by it. I wrote a poem about her and about what it's like to be on in one of these sound journeys. That's the name of her business, Sacred Sound Journey sacred sound journey. So anyway, what I have come to find out is that vibration is everything. What I've learned from Arjan is vibration is literally everything. And that the, the secret to feeling better, long life, good emotions, positive outlook, uh, connection with source, blah, all the goodness in life that is linked to the rate at which your vagal nerve vibrates. So we're going to take the woo-woo, the ethereal, the vibrations. I'm into the drumming. I like the vibration. They can heal me. Okay, to making it an actual part of our physical self, scientifically proven that if you can raise the vibration of your vagal nerve, you can raise the, the output or the uh, efficiency of your organs as well as your mood and your overall well-being and happiness. 
What? I know. So the vagus nerve is the longest, and I'm going to go to my notes here and talk a little bit of science. The vagus nerve, the longest, and it's the most complex of the 12 pairs of cranial nerves that we have, right? Okay. That emanate from the brain. And it transmits information to and from the surface of the brain to the tissues and organs. Okay. The goal of the vagus nerve is to keep your body in a state of homeostasis. Homeostasis means everything copacetic. Everything is great. Your systems are all stable. Everything's running at the right speed. Everything's working together. And it also plays the role, your vagus nerves, of activating the parasympathetic functions. What do we talk about all the time? Fight, fight or flight. Rest and digest, right? Fight or flight, sympathetic nervous system. Rest and digest the parasympathetic nervous system. So the vagal nerve plays the role of activating or keeping you in touch with that parasympathetic nervous system, the one who gives you the objectivity to step back, back and decide, not just react. The one that says, uh, I am not just a monkey brain living on, in, on innate uh, abilities, right? But that I can consciously decide how to react to the stimulus that's coming towards me. That is what the vagus nerves does for you. It helps you move from the sympathetic system, fight or flight, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, to rest and digest, take a brief, deep breath, find my center, think about this a bit, make a conscious decision, not just a reaction. Important. And it is the, in fact, the vagus nerve is the main part of your parasympathetic nervous system. And that oversees a bunch of body functions. And it is also, it is part of what helps your body to regulate inflammation, glucose, gut flora, heart rate, important stuff. But the most important thing now, because we're here a show about happiness is, right? I wouldn't say we're not a show about health because health equals, you know, health and happiness are highly linked, but I'm going to take it back to how it makes you feel. And so this in turn, your, your, inflammation, glucose, gut flora, heart rate, those things control your mood. Your hypothalamus, which is your pituitary adrenal axis, what 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 hormones are being released into your system, right? Lowers your heart rate. Uh, stimulates your blood sugar balance. It crease, increases stomach acidity so you can digest your food properly. Um, it controls bile in your gallbladder. It, it controls your immune response, di immune response, digestion, heart rate. And it is, it is the connection, get it, the vagal nerve. It is the connection between your mind and your gut. And I don't know about you, more and more studies, more and more science is pointing to what happens in the gut drives what happens in the body. And this, of course, if we go backwards, I'm a process, it. I'm a process engineer, right? I can't help but draw the process back to the beginning. That starts with what we eat. What we eat feeds our digestion, which in turn determines the outcome of our bodies to the point where it absolutely influences our vagal nerve. All right. Afferent nerve fibers. So, okay. So it uses the, the vagal nerve uses something called uh, afferent new fibers. And afferent fibers are axons. They're carried by a sensory nerve, and they relay sensory information to sensory receptors. Okay. So it's not just about, it's not just a regulating system, but it's a, it's a perception system. It's a perceiving system. And studies show, many, many studies, that stimulating the vagus nerve can treat psychiatric and gastrointestinal trouble. Again, the gut-brain connection, right? So we want resiliency. We want to be able to recover quickly from illness or from injury. We want to spring back into shape. We want elasticity in our muscles, right? Your vagal tone, your personal vibration. Your vagal tone is your personal vibration. And it is directly and, and distinctly correlated with your ability to regulate stress. And really, isn't mood management, isn't staying positive, isn't it positive thinking and uh, stepping back and, and paying attention, you know, staying objective, taking a step back, thinking through things with some perspective, 
pulling in our rules of forgive everyone for everything, have low expect, you know, no expectations of outcomes. But the, uh, the va the ability to regulate stress that that is how you handle. I mean, it's easy to be in a good mood when you're at a birthday party, right? Well, maybe, but, or when you're doing something you love, uh, the part about that's hard is to manage to, that mood when things are not going your way or when uh, external stresses or conflicts or whatever are coming your way, right? You, how do we stay happy in the midst of this? And so what we're saying is you can control this by raising the vibration of your vagal nerve, the vagal nerve, because this vibration can be influenced by you, your actions, your behaviors, right? It influences your nervous system. Anyway, guts are directly linked to our immune system, which is directly linked to how our how our our, our homeostasis, how our, our organs are all working together. And you have an opportunity to impact the vagal tone, right? So vagal tone is the degree of activity within the, within the parasympathetic nervous system. Changes your heart rate and key functions. So if you're living in the sympathetic nervous system, if you're living in, and that's stress, I'm just going to be really serious. The sympathetic nervous system is living in stress. Parasympathetic nervous system takes the st stress back and deals with that stress objectively and in a kind and helpful way, not in a screaming, throwing things tantrum kind of way, which is what the sympathetic nervous system is more known for. So, it changes your heart rate, other key functions. And again, the higher your vagal tone, the more likely you are to respond to stress stimuli in your from your parasympathetic nervous system than your sympathetic nervous system. I mean, okay, science might challenge that statement, but it, that's my simple distillation of the information down to the down to the easiest to understand, right? When your vagal tone is high, when you're vibrating high. And I go back to the lazy man's guide to um, enlightenment and my analogy of all of us being in a tube and we can decide anytime we want to raise our vibration and shoot to the top of the, of the tube. The same thing is true with the vagal nerve, right? You can change your, va this is physical. Now you can change how your vagal or where your vagal tone is vibrating. And we know we want it to be as high as possible because that tone is how toned or how healthy your, or your organs, your system is, right? The higher the vagal tone, the easier it is to get into a relaxed state. The easier it is to move from stress stimuli into objectivity, how do I want to react to this, versus stress stimuli, ah, ah, immediate reaction. Research in Psychological Science, that's a magazine, in 2013 shows a positive feedback loop between a high vagal tone, good physical health, and good emotional health. And there are studies that suggest this is the missing link with chronic inflammation. And if you are paying attention to health studies these days, everything is caused by inflammation. Inflammation is the bad guy in almost every situation. So let's link it all back together, right? Low vagal tone equals high inflammation equals poor functioning of your systems equals you're in a bad mood and you're operating from stress all the time. High vagal tone means you are, um, the inflammation is low. All systems are firing on, on good cylinders. You are able to maintain a positive and happy outlook on life. Now, even if you're fabulously healthy, there's no reason to ignore this scientific connection that can help you feel better at any given moment. So what are the symptoms of a low vagal tone? Eh, you know, this is not good. The good stuff this is the bad stuff. Anxiety, depression, mood disorders, headaches, migraines, inability to relax, insomnia, poor sleep, poor breathing, uh, loneliness. I, if you're not feeling good, you're not out whooping it up with your friends, right? A dysregulated, overactive, hypothalamic, pituitary, adrenal access. I don't know what that is, but it does not sound good. Difficulty meditating, hypochlor hypochloridia, which is low stomach acids, gallbladder issues, slow bile production, dysbiosis, constipation, poor absorption of nutrients. This list just goes on. I'm not going to read it all. It is really awful. 
but chronic inflammation and greater rates of inflammatory, inflammatory conditions, autoimmune diseases, lupus, arthritis, IBS. Okay. We don't need any more help to understand the badness of a low vagal tone, right? So depending on the frequency of vagal stimulation, we know it can turn off an, ap an asthma attack, an epileptic seizure, a migraine, a cluster headache, and it can reduce the perception of acid reflux, says Stephen Silberstein, MD, professor of neurology and director of the Headache Center at Philadelphia's Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals. So, okay, so now, hopefully I've convinced you that you need to pay attention to your vagal vibration, to your vagal tone, to you need to at least be aware of at what level you are vibrating. Right. So what are some physical things? What are some actual things you can do? Uh, again, like anything, thoughts aren't enough. You will have to take some action to make the change, but that's okay. These are easy actions. And here we go. First one, cold therapy. Acute cold exposure has been known to activate the, the vagal nerve. All right. When your body adjusts to cold, your fight or flight, your sympathetic system declines and your rest and digest, your parasympathetic nervous system increases. All mediated by the vagus nerve, right? So take a cold shower, splash cold water on your face every morning, step outside if it's cold outside in your, in your undies, and just to have a moment for your body to deal with the cold and immediately will raise, oh, I don't like to be cold. Okay, but do you want to raise your vibration? Of course you do. And you can, you don't have to, okay, let's say you decide you want to do cold showers or you live in a cold climate and you're going to step outside. You don't have to go out there a lot of time. Just step outside for, for like five seconds the first time. Turn the cold water on the last five seconds of your shower. And tomorrow make it the last seven seconds of your shower. That's what I do. I do about 30 seconds of cold. I'd like to say I take a cold shower every day. I'm not there yet. I'm just taking 30 seconds. Okay, deep breathing. Deep breathing can improve your vagal stimulation and can cause relaxation. Uh, vagal stimulation can cause relaxation, but the opposite is also true. Deep and slow breathing is another way to stimulate your vagus nerve, right? Everybody knows deep breathing reduces anxiety and stress. That's just, uh, right? And that, so when you increase anxiety and stress, you're increasing your use of the parasympathetic system. And you do this by activating the nervous system. So take six deep breaths over the course of a minute. That's a great way to relieve stress, to just stop that cycle of overwhelm, that, that those emotions that are washing over you where you feel like out of control and you don't know what you do. Take six deep breaths deeply from your diaphragm. Put your hand on your belly. Make sure that when you breathe in, your belly is expanding. When you breathe out, your belly collapses because you want to take in a deep breath all the way down into your diaphragm. And when you do this, your stomach expands. Like I said, you put your hand on your stomach. Make sure your stomach expands. That's how you know you're breathing in your dilate. You're, you're breathing through your diaphragm long and slow. Starting to stimulate. Let's do it together. We're starting to stimulate a vagus nerve right now. Ready? Let's take a deep breath. Deeper. So try 10 minutes of deep breathing daily, right? You can use an app, all kinds of breathing apps out there. Um, but 10 minutes a day. You got 10 minutes a day. You could deep breathe while you're watching while you're watching your favorite Netflix show or news in the morning, right? Okay, this is my favorite one, singing, humming, gargling. Well, I'm looping them together, but I'm just going to start with the one I love the best is singing. Singing, singing. Um, you know, we used to sing together as a people. In ancient times, we sang around the campfire. We sang songs of our ancestors. Um, we sang together and, and you know, we, and, and pounded our, our cups of mead on the table, right? Singing together is a an activity that is exponentially good for your vagus nerve. Because as you sing, you're raising your vibrations. And when you're singing in a group with other people, the collective vibration of all of you, of all of you vibrating together at the, on the same notes at the same time is, oh my gosh, so powerful. But that's just singing in a group. Let's just talk about singing yourself. Well, I don't really get a chance to sing, Tina. I don't really sing. Well, you sing in the shower. You sing in the car. You sing while you're doing the dishes. 
you sing with your kids. You find ways to sing because singing or you don't like to sing. You know what's interesting to me? I love to sing and everyone who knows me knows I love to sing and I'm not that great, but that doesn't stop me because I love to sing so much. And it's amazing to me that people are so afraid to let other people hear their singing voice. We're all, we're all embarrassed because we're not Christine Aguilera. We are not Kelly Clarkson. That voice, that beautiful voice that we all love to listen to may not be what's coming out of you, but that's okay. That's okay because you're not there to entertain other people. This singing is for you, right? So sing along with the radio. If you don't like singing, well, I have a hard time understanding how you could not like singing. But let's say you're just not a singer. Hum, hum, hmm. The point is, like we said, the vagal nerve is very settled right here in your throat. And so you, sound healing, you have the best instrument for sound healing that is available on the planet as a part of your body if you have a set of vocal cords. So yes, you can be a sound healer like Arjan and bring in the the awesome crystal bowls and the Tibet bowls and the the gongs and the bazillion different ways she does. She has to make sounds and it's wonderful. But short of that, every day you have the most amazing vibration tool ava available to man. Ah, mm, mm, mm. Whether you sing, you hum, you can throw a little gargling in there. Vibrating these, this part of your throat is raising your vagal vibration in, in an amazing way. Singing humming can be relaxing on its own, but there's psychological reasons for it, right? Because the vagus nerve passes through your throat and your vocal cords and your inner ear. And research published in Frontiers in Psychology say singing humming and gargling can help activate it. Try singing on a daily basis. I'm saying find five minutes to sing every day as loudly as you can. Maybe you're in your car on the way to work. No, ain't nobody listening, right? Um, like I said, maybe you get the kids together and you put on. We got a couple of favorite videos the kids, grandkids and I love. We love to sing along, right? We dance out, but we also love to sing it out too. But when you do this, basically it activates... This works, it works the muscles in the back of your throat, and that's where the vagus nerve is. And again, don't want to sing? Try humming. Just hum it away. And then try gargling. You don't, if you want to gargle with Listerine or some kind of a something, that's great. But just gargling with water several times a day. Once again, gargling activates the vagus nerve in the back of your throat. It contracts these muscles, which activates the nerve and stimulates your gastrointestinal tract. If you're drink, drink several car, large glasses of water each day and gargle each sip. Well, I don't know if that's going to happen. Gargle each sip, but do gargle. I gargle in the shower every morning, right? I just. Okay. So here's a bit about gargling. You got to gargle long enough and deep enough to make it challenging. It doesn't work unless it's more challenging. So find a time to gargle. I try to gargle in the morning and at night. I forget the night one sometimes, but. Anyway, uh, do the exercise to help strengthen your vagal pathways discussed in Dr. Katis Karazian's book, Why Isn't My Brain Working? I'm going to have to check that book out. Wave vibration. Okay. And this is a therapy where, I, I don't know, you got to stand on an oscillating plate that produces low-level vibrations. It basically vibrates your body for you. These vibrations create positive stress throughout your body like exercise stress, and it activates your vagal, your vagal nerve. Um, but you got to have one of those wave vibration therapy things. Uh, rebounding is an also, it's also, it's like a mini trampoline, right? You're just jumping on a mini trampoline. Same as wave vibrations. You're just, you, instead of a machine making the waves, you're making the waves, right? But you can get small a small one, uh, meditation. No, you can raise your vagal nerve through meditation. In 2010, Barbara Fredrickson and Bethany Cock recruited 70 volunteers for an experiment. They were each asked to record the strength of their emotions they felt every day, right? And they used one of those machines. They measured an actual vagal tone at the beginning and at the end. As a part of the experiment, half were taught meditation 
and half just went about their lives. Those who meditated showed a significant increase in vagal tone at the end of nine weeks, which is associated with an increase in positive emotions, which was associated with meditation, right? And it was the first experimental evidence that if you increased po positive emotions, that led to increased social closeness, and that led to a measurable change in the vagal tone. Try, try meditating a little bit every day, maybe just five minutes a day, maybe 10 minutes a day, maybe work your way up. Again, many good apps on meditation. If you have trouble uh, keeping your mind still, if meditation is tough for you, try a guided meditation. I'm telling you, go on YouTube. Guided meditation for, and then whatever it is you need, relaxation, stimulation, whatever. There's a, there's a, there's a guided meditation out there for you. Okay, yoga, yoga. You can add toning your vagal nerve to the many, many reasons we do yoga, right? It incorporates diaphragmatic breathing. How about that? Forward bends, putting your hands above your head, chanting, all the things we're, a lot of the stuff we're, maybe not saying, but a lot of the stuff we're talking about on, on the, how to raise your vagal nerve can happen in yoga. You're doing it automatically in yoga. You're holding positions. You're breathing deeply. Try some yoga. Nothing, no, no downside to yoga. All right. And a massage. Now, a lot of people think massage is a luxury, right? Uh, place it on a wish list rather than on my to-do list. But we should be thinking about massage like exercise, right? Like eating, like sleeping. But it's a necessity because there's a whole bunch of studies that show incredible emotional and physical health benefits of this ancient healing practice, right? Research suggests that also that the, the massage is very good for your vagal nerve, for stimulating your vagal nerve. Um, so get your massage, right? Once or twice a month. I'm going to take that advice myself, right? Acupuncture. Acupuncture has shown, studies have shown that acupuncture can regulate vagal activity, right? Acupuncture can improve your gastrointestinal health, respiratory system, heart health, because if you're improving your vagal tone, it's improving all those systems, right? And they protect you against auto neurodegenerative diseases. And bitter herbs and foods. Okay, bitter herbs and foods aid digestion and stimulate the vagus nerve. A wide variety of these. Some are taken as a tea. Oh, excuse me. Let's see. Some of them are taken as a tea to help your body register the bitter taste to get the digestive juices flowing. Here's a list. Arugula, basil, bitter melon, chamomile, cilantro, dandelion, dark chocolate. I'll, I'll take that as my bitter food, right? Dill. Love dill. Greek seeds, golden seal, horseradish. I love horseradish. Japanese eggplant, jicama. I like jicama. Kale, leafy greens, lettuce, milk thistle, nettles, parsley, radish, sesame, turmeric, watercress. I'm going get, to get some of that stuff in my diet. All right, and finally, here we are at the end of the show, and we're going to talk about the last thing to raise your vagal nerve, and that is laughter. Laughter shows, uh, studies show that laughter boosts resiliency, your ability to bounce back. It improves the functioning of your immune system by increasing the count and the activities of your of your uh, T cells, you know, the stuff that goes after a disease in your body. It increases your antibodies, your interferon, and it has apparently been shown to increase your bagel tone. And it also, through reducing the, when you laugh, it reduces the muscles and tension in your face, your necks, your diaphragm. Proof that laughter really is the best medicine. And a while back, I did a show on laughter and on how you can create laughter anytime. <laughs> it's easy to laugh when you want to. And it's so good for you. I 
laughing therapy. I think we should have laughing therapy where you just laugh for five minutes a day. And then the rest of the day, everything that happens, you're just like, whatever, because you're in such a great mood. Laughter is uh, okay. My Dr. Tina, that's my recommendation for almost everything. Go get you some laughter. So be patient with these methods, right? We talked about strengthening the vagal tone and your gut brain access. It doesn't happen one day. It doesn't happen because you do some deep breathing today or you, you know, you, you start gargling wherever it takes a while. You're going to have to, it's, it's not an event. It's a process. And you're going to have to spend a few, spend some time strengthening your vagal tones and your gut brain axis. And you might need several weeks for make it to make a change just as you might with weight training or exercise before you start seeing or feeling the physical changes. It's going to take a few weeks, but I'm going to recommend do some research on the vagal nerve. Uh, read about it. Be conscious of it. Think about ways that you can increase that vagal tone. And if you do nothing else, if nothing else happens, just add laughter, a little, little laughter to your, to your life every day. Good for your mood, good for your body, good for your vagal tone. All right, that's all for today. Until tomorrow, make it a happy day.